Hi guys, so we are, we, I am live here. Um, I just thought that I would do a little thing this week where I do some live videos and answer some of your questions. Uh, sometimes it's so much easier just to hear the answer than it is to read the answer. So I'm doing a week of live videos and if you share a question with me about anything related to decluttering, organizing, greening up your life, reducing your waste, rethinking your holiday traditions, um, living with people who have a lot of clutter. That's a question I get a lot. Um, I'm happy to answer your questions all week long. So just go ahead and get them to me and I will be answering questions. So the, I got a couple of questions this morning and the one that I'm gonna answer today is about, it's from Bran Walters and Bran asks, can you discuss the best way to organize and store family photos digital and paper copies. So this is a great question for me right now because I, I actually wrote a column on this this week that's gonna be in the Albany Times Union on Sunday. So you should definitely make sure to read that. It's about kind of how to deal with family archival pictures. Um, and I'm also, every year for my kids for Christmas, I make them, uh, we call it, they call it their yearbook. So I make them a book of photos from their year. And that's like on the top of my to-do list today. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm all in this mode of photos and pictures, and I would love to share my tips on how to deal with this giant collection that we all have. So let's talk about digital photos first. So number one, we have an enormous number of digital photos, right? How many times do you take out your phone every day and just Snap, 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 right? Tons of photos. So my first tip for dealing with digital photos is delete. <laughs> so delete your digital photos um, frequently. You know, and not all of them, obviously. You want to, with any collection in your life, you want to curate the perfect collection for you. So if you take three pictures of something, Think about how many pictures you actually need to keep from that event or of that one landscape or whatever it is that you're photographing. Usually it's just one or two, um, but it, you know, it could be different depending on the circumstances. And go ahead and right away, as soon as possible, delete the ones that are not that great. So I do this you know, pretty much when I'm sitting, like waiting for my kids to finish up with a sport or if I'm in a doctor's office and I'm in the waiting room or any time that I find myself like, where I would mindlessly scroll on my phone, which I'm trying to do less of, but it still happens. Um, instead of mindlessly scrolling, I actually go through my photos and I go ahead and delete any that I don't want to keep. So, you know, I'll go like swipe one way and then back to see which, which photo I like the best and then delete. And then I'll go do the same thing to, for that whole like series of photographs. So number one, start curating your collection of digital pictures as soon as possible, because if you wait, for years to do this, you're literally talking about tens of thousands of pictures. And at that point, it's just too overwhelming and it's unlikely that you're actually gonna go ahead and delete the photos. So you wanna stay on top of this in a, in a really timely fashion as much as you can. So my next tip, so first tip number one, declutter your photos, your digital photos frequently. Tip number two, I, you definitely want to back up your digital collection of photos. I love Google Photos. It's, I mean, I've tried a couple of different photo storage, you know, solutions, and I find that Google Photos is absolutely the best one. Here's why. It's free for the most part. Um, if you have a huge collection, you might end up paying for storage like 99 cents a month or something. But for me, that's totally worth the, you know, having these photos off of my device, which could easily, you know, something could happen to my phone, like I, and I could lose everything. So backing up to um, some cloud somewhere, some service is great peace of mind for me. It's totally worth the 99 cents a month, I think that I pay for storage on Google Photos. The other reason that I love Google Photos is because you, it has face recognition, and it has a great search feature. So, so many times I find myself looking for a very specific picture and I can't really remember when I took it or I have so many pictures that I'm scrolling through and I just, you know, I just miss it. 
on Google Photos, you could search for like blue jacket and every picture that has a blue jacket pops up. Or um, you can use their photo, their face recognition. And so like my kids are tagged in there so I can search for their names and every picture that has them in it comes up. Their search is so good that it saves me so much time when I'm looking for any photos. You know, sometimes I'm looking for a picture of my dog in the snow. So I would type in dog in the snow and all of the pictures of dogs in snow that I have on my Google Photos come up. So Google Photos is great. It's a great way to organize your photos digitally. You can also create albums and e really easily share the pictures with other people. Um, so, you know, I also am finding that my kids are getting older, they have phones, they have a lot of pictures too, and I want to get their pictures, I want my, husband, my husband's pictures, so everything just gets backed up to Google Photos in our own accounts, but we can share back and forth really easily. So I love Google Photos for digital storage, but before you upload, delete, right? So <laughs> you wanna delete as much as possible, um, just to make it easier when you do have your pictures. You can also, in Google Photos, add metadata to your photos, so you can actually tag them with certain descriptors, which could make it easier to find them in the future as well. Um, so yeah, so I just, I love the Google Photos. So tip number one, delete as you go along, curate the, the, your perfect collection of photos in the beginning. Tip number two, find a cloud storage solution so that the photos are not staying on your phone. Um, let's see, my other tips for digital pictures. I think one great thing to do really is to make a point to print out some of your pictures every so often. You could just print, you know, like four by six photos or you could turn your pictures into like photo albums. And this is what I do. I brought an example here. Every year for my kids, I make them what they call a yearbook. Um, and basically it's just a picture, it's like a digital scrapbook of their year. So I do like their actual birthday to birthday. Um, so here's an example. This is one that I did for my daughter, Stella, when she was three. I do these every year. And I use a service called Mixbook, which is very simple to use. Um, and it just, you know, I basically just put in pictures and some words um, of her year. I make, when I do these once a year, it's a Christmas present for them, um, I print out a 12 by 12 hardcover. Now this is my copy that I keep. And then I give them a six by six soft cover. So the same exact book, but this way, they can, especially when they're younger, they can take these books, they can handle them, they can drag them around, and it doesn't matter if it gets wrecked because I have a backup hardcover copy here that never gets touched. Um, and of course, you can always print out books later on, but I love, this is also like my kid's favorite, favorite gift to get every year. And truly, when they were younger, like maybe six and under, they would carry these books with them everywhere. They would take them to school, they would take them to their grandparents' houses. They always wanted to read these books because, you know, kids are so curious about themselves and they love identifying things that happen to them and people they know. So these books have been really invaluable as a gift um, and they're super cute and fun. So this is a service called Mixbook. Um, so even if you're just printing out prints of your photos, you really want to make sure that when you have all these digital photos, you're creating hard copies of them because otherwise it's unlikely that anybody is ever going to see them. And what's the point of taking a photo if you're not sharing it and using it to spark memories? Um, this is just taking photos of things is one great way that we can kind of keep that memory with us, right? So. Um, it's, you know, so share, share the photos, print them out every so often. Um, in terms of your printed photos, so my advice there is again, you want to curate this collection, right? So you want to have a nice curated collection of photos that's perfect for you. A thousand landscape photos, really in the future, it's unlikely that you're going to want to look at the same landscape photo over and over and over again. So figure out how, you know, if you go on a trip, 
how many photos do you want to keep that represent that trip? Um, and try and whittle your collection down to that amount. Now, when you're storing photos, you want to make sure that you're storing them in acid-free enclosures. So you can get acid-free photo books, um, acid-free cardboard boxes, you know, like those nice photo boxes. You can get those pretty much anywhere. Um, you know, from Staples, you can get it from Target, you can get it from Joanne Fabric, Michaels, like all those places that sell photo stuff. You can go CVS, whatever it is, um, and buy acid-free uh, photo albums or boxes. It'll just say acid free on it. So make sure you look for that. Acid degrades photos. So you want to make sure that anything that you're storing your photos in is not going to actually end up ruining your photos. You also want to make sure that you're storing your pictures in a place in your house that is not, um, doesn't have a lot of changes or fluctuations in humidity and temperature and is pretty rodent proof. So attics, basements, and garages bad places to store anything like photos, really anything that's of value to you. Um, the best place to store boxes of photos and stuff like that are in interior closets that don't have direct sunlight because sunlight can also degrade your photos. Um, so you want to declutter this collection. You want to make sure it's stored nicely so that it'll, it'll last for a long time. And then I would also say, have one day a year, maybe it's at like Thanksgiving or Christmas or another family event where you break out these photo albums and look at them. Um, so often we have collections of stuff that just sit there and that's, you know, why not use it? Why not take this thing that you have that represents this beautiful part of your life and enjoy it with the people who you love? Um, so, those are, and let me just see if I skipped anything because I wrote down, no, we're good. Okay, so those are my tips for photos, for decluttering and storing digital and paper copies of family photos. Um, if you have a question for a Facebook Live, please go ahead and share it with me. I will get to it this week. I'm gonna be doing Facebook Lives all week long answering your questions. Um, and I'm so thrilled that you were here. So go ahead. Curate your perfect life, and I will see you on another Facebook Live soon. Bye.